So hopefully by now you are most of the way or are done drawing a normal distribution curve. And we're going to use this to answer this question. Let's have a read of it together. It says, <clears throat> experience has shown that the scores of a commonly used IQ test can be assumed to be normally distributed, like so, okay, with a mean of 100 standard deviation of 15. Okay, stop right there. If we know those two facts, I can immediately go to my normal distribution and start to fill in information. For example, the most important place on your normal distribution is the place that everything centers around. This guy right in the middle, which is what? It's the mean. In this case, that is 100. Now, remember, the, uh, the thing about the normal distribution is the mean and the median and the mode, they're all the same thing. They're all the equal value. Okay, so there's 100 in there. Okay, now if you think back to some of the diagrams we gave you guys earlier this week about the normal distribution, you can see I've got these markings. Do you notice that? I've got exactly three going this way and three going that way. Each one represents going out one standard deviation from the mean, then another standard deviation, then another standard deviation. Okay, now I actually know what the standard deviation is. It's 15. Okay, so let's, um, let's do the left hand side first. If I go one standard deviation below, what should be the next number down? 85. I'll go again, the next one down, take away 15 again. 70. And if I subtract one more time, you get to 55, right? I can do subtraction. My brain worked good, okay? What about the other direction? These are even easier. I'm just adding 15 every time. So 115, 130, 145, okay? Now, what you can see is, and um, I didn't ask you to do this before, but Maybe you looked at it and thought, oh, what's that about? You might notice I have another horizontal axis underneath. What we've written here, these are the IQ scores. So these are X's, right? What I'd like underneath here is the corresponding Z scores. So if I call this guy, this parallel line, a Z axis, right? On the mean, you've got a Z score of zero, right? You're not above or below the mean. That's what a Z score of zero actually means, or right? Is the cumulative thing that we did right? uh, not quite, not quite. Um, I mean, you can interpret it that way, but I'm not, I'm not getting to that yet. Think about, as I went down here, I was subtracting a standard deviation every time, right? So I would have gone negative one, then negative two, then negative three. We tend to stop there, right? Same thing going in the opposite direction, one, two, and three. So here are the Z scores. Here are the actual scores, or you could call them raw scores if you like, okay? All right, so now we can then take this and use it to help us answer the questions. It says, um, approximately, because this is just a model, right? But it's a very good model. Approximately what percentage of the distribution lies between 85 and 115? So let's have a look at where that is on our normal distribution. Very good. Now, some of you have like your previous pages of working there. Have a look. This is the area that I'm interested in here, right in the middle, right? Now, I wonder how many of you recall, and this is literally the way that I would um, write it, by the way. I'm going to rule a line here. For part A, a score between, uh, what do we say, 85 and 115. Oh, I have the N768. Okay, good. It corresponds to a Z score between negative 1 and one, do you agree with that? Yes, sir. And if we go back to how we define the normal distribution, we would say, therefore, this is 68% of the population. 68% lies within this range. Is that okay? So far, so good. How about part B? Have a look at the numbers. Okay, good. So when you have a look, you're like 55. That's all the way down here. Three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above. So the way I'd write this is, if you're x, that's your actual score, your raw score. If it's between these values, then the corresponding z scores are from negative 3 to 3. Are you with me? So that's 99.7%. Question? Please don't yell at me. Yes? <laughs> What's the formula, Shiggy? <laughs> um, I actually can't answer that question off the top of my head. I just Google it, to be honest. If you look up Mathematics HSC, 2020 reference sheet, you'll find it. It'll be the first link. <laughs> Say again. <laughs> this one or this one or both? Yep, sure. Okay, so where did I get this number from? Sorry. 
Yeah. Yeah. Where did I get this number from? Where I got it from was partly the definition of the normal distribution. Okay? We can say 68% of scores will be one standard deviation away, 95% of scores will be two, and then 99.7 will be within three standard deviations of the mean. And unfortunately, there's not much of a, oh, this is why it's 99.7. Um, the reason for that number specifically is kind of weird, and we'll get to it later. That's right. But for now, just to remember, it's fine. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's on the sheet. Uh, Parent. You wrote 115 for B when it was. Oh, it's 130, 145? Very high. Uh, sorry, my, my bad. There we go. Is that better? Okay. Part C is the trickiest one. Here is where if you have some other colors, they will really help. And if you have a decent sized normal distribution, that will also really help. Look at the question. It says, what's the percentage of the population that's above 130? X is above 130. That's the question. OK? I have question. question. Yeah? Are you talking about the dash in the middle of the Z? I, I write the dash in the middle of the Z because if I do not, it so quickly turns into a 2, especially when I'm in a hurry in an exam where I don't read carefully. Um, so this is kind of a habit that I pick up on. Okay? Do you have to do it? No, but I strongly recommend it. Have a look. Where's 130 on our graph? Here it is, 130. All right? Here's 130. But what I want, this is different, right? What I want is from here to the right. Does that make sense? 130 and above. Now, this is very different from A and B. A and B are kind of straight out of the textbook. They're like within this range and then within this range. That's why these numbers are literally the ones we just handed to you. Okay? But you actually have to think to do part C, which is what I'm going to help you do. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, if I started at 130, I'm, I'm not saying there's any endpoint, but I might as well just write it. Like, I, I don't like writing infinity because it's a weird idea. I'm just going to say x is greater than or equal to. Okay? So how do I do this? All right? Well, have a look closely with me. I said some colors would be really helpful here, right? Do you remember when we did part A? We said that this whole section in here was 34%. Do you agree? Sorry, 68%. So therefore, if I just take this half here, right? 68%. This is half of that. So this is the 34% that I mistakenly said just now. Okay? So that's 34%. Now have a look at the next section over. And you really need to think about this. How big is this section? How big is that? Hmm. Now remember, right, if I went, with, here we go. Is it 9 7 4? Yeah, think about it. Look at it with me, you 12. If I went all the way out to my uh, two standard deviations, to here to here, how much is that? 95. It's 95, right? We know that's 95. If I subtract this 68 in the middle, if I subtract the 68 in the middle, that'll leave me with these two green sections, right? Well, I haven't colored this green because I actually don't want it. I just want one of them, right? What's 95 take away the 68? That's 27. 95% take away 68%. That gives me the 27. But I don't want two of them. I just want one. Does that make sense? So that's why I divide by two. That gives me 13.5%. OK, now, this, this is what I need, despite looking very indirect. This is what I need to work out the answer to this question. Because can you, like, do you agree with me, right? Underneath this probability, Density function. That's what this thing is. The whole thing adds up to 100%. Do you agree? The whole, that's the whole point of it, right? So if I go from the middle all the way to the right and never stop, what's that add up to? It's half, right? It's 50%. Well, the part that I'm interested in is the part of that 50% that's not this and it's not that. It's this guy in here. Do you agree? Yeah. So to work out this answer, I need to do 50%. That's the whole right-hand side. And then subtract these two numbers. Are you with me? Yeah. That's 34 and 13 and a half. What do you get? 2.5. 2.5? Okay. Now, as a final note, right, we could have done it one other way, which is we could have worked out, instead of doing this subtraction thing, you could do the same thing to work out this guy, 
You can work that out in exactly the same way. And you can also work out this guy over here. I'm going to tell you right now, if you go ahead and give that a go, you'll get 2.35% and 0.15%. Guess what happens when you add th those up? You get the same 2.5% that we got before. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's 